Welcome to Functional Print Friday. Have you ever wanted to solve a little problem with a custom design part? A simple mount for your gaming headset, a handy clip to keep your cables tidy, or a custom organizer for your desk. Every week, I'll show you how to design and 3D print a useful, everyday object using Fusion 360. You don't need any prior experience. I'll walk you through the entire process, from a blank screen to a finished part. By the end of this episode, you'll have a new skill and a functional print you can use right away. Let's get started. Welcome back. Today, we are creating a wall mount for this electrical charger. The first step is to get the dimensions right. So let's start measuring. Begin by measuring the widest point of the device. That's 3.7 inches. I got my digital calipers here, which are perfect for a project like this. They give us a much more precise measurement. Now, measure the depth, including the small feet on the bottom. That's 2.3 inches. Make sure to jot down those numbers, the width, depth, and height, so you don't forget them when we head into Fusion 360. And finally, let's set the height at five inches. It is important when setting the height that it is tall enough to secure the device in, but not overkill. We wanna be able to see the status light on the front. Before we move on, take a close look at the bottom of the device. When we design the base plate, we need to make sure we leave room for the exhaust fan and the power plug. Today we're going to create our model based off of four things. Sketch, offset, extrude, and fillet. So to start this, we're going to do a top-down view, and I'm going to go ahead and open up a sketch on this plane. We're going to go ahead and select two-point rectangle. Start on the edge, and we are going to make our numbers 2.3. These are all based on the measurements we took before. And 3.7. Remember, this is always inches when normally most people use millimeters, but I prefer inches. Okay, so now that that is created, we are going to create an offset. I'm going to select my rectangle and I'm going to move that up 0.15. I'm going to do another offset. So this is first my wall and now I'm going to create my base. So that way that I have something for that charger to sit on. So I'll make that negative 0.15. Okay, from here, I'm going to go ahead and let's go ahead and stretch out my wall. So we're going to say extrude or E. I'm going to make that five inches tall. Once you extrude your first part of your sketch, I was going to make that sketch become invisible. So I'm going to click on the high on the left side. Now my sketch is visible again, and I'm going to select the bottom, which this is going to be the base of my sketch of my normal. I'm going to push E again for extrude, and we're going to make that point two. We don't get our mob her sketch now, so I'm going to go ahead and uncheck the eye. And as you can see, here is our model at this point. It's just a case with the bottom one. Good. So now we're going to look at the front and we're going to go in just so that way that everything lines up with our lines so it makes it easier for us. We'll look at our measurements because each one of these measurements is half of an inch. I'm going to go ahead and move this model over 0.15 because that's going to deal with the offset of what the size of the wall was. So you can now sit and remind up against this line and this one. Okay, from here, we're gonna go ahead and we're going to create a box. On this plane, what we're gonna to try to do is we're trying to make a cutout. So that way that we have an opening on the front, that's gonna allow us for number one while cooling on the charger, as well as also give us a point where we can see the charging indicator light. So we know if it's actually charging, if it's sitting idle, et cetera. Plus it also, it cuts down on the amount of film that needed to print. So as far as our width, we know that our body is four inches wide. We don't want to go the entire way, but we would like to have a pretty decent size cutout on it. So if we do 2.75, that should be pretty good. Or let's just go at 2.5 to make it an easier number. As far as depth, it doesn't really matter. Just whatever looks good to you. I'm going to go ahead and go with 3.5. And then this is important where the operation is. We will not join this. We are going to create a new body. Push OK. And you can see now we have about two bodies here. I want to get this body centered in here so that everything lines up. So I'm going to right here. I'm going to go over, make sure this highlight. I'm going to click modify, select a line. 
I'm going to click the box in the middle of this body. And then when I move my mouse over towards the other larger body, there's a dot in the middle I can select. So when I did that, it actually moved this directly completely in the middle. That's fine. So now we can take this body and we can move it up towards the top. So we increase our cutout. Okay, look at this. It looks like we want to actually make this cutout a little bit bigger. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in. And I'm going to utilize the extrude command. And we're going to go ahead and pull this down just a little bit more. But because I'm extruding, I have to make that other body and other body invisible. Again, this is the step that you might not need to do. I'm just doing it so that way I like the way that everything looks. Okay. From here, now I'm going to click on this box and I'm going to extrude again. This time, we're going to actually end up doing a cut. So I'm going to go negative. And I know that my walls are 0.15. So if I go to anything longer than that, I know I'm going to hit it. So we're going to go and just say negative 0.4. I know that that'll be enough to cut through that other box, but not far enough to go to the back wall. Okay, so now that is cut. So now we have our basic design. You can see what we've done here, but let's go ahead and spruce this up, make it look a little better. So in order to do that, we're gonna go ahead and click on Flay or this button up at the top, Flay is FT. So push half, I'm gonna click on this, line right here, and we'll drag this out, see what looks nice. 0.7 looks pretty good, so we're going to go ahead and go with that. And let's try to do the other side and make sure everything looks here. Slip the line, push F, or rinse like 0.7. Now let's go ahead and do the same for the top. We'll go with a little lower number on there, but let's go ahead and clean this up and make this with a nice rounded hedge. 0.5 looks good. Let's do it for the other side as well. There we go. Okay, now if we look at this, we are almost done. Here's how it looks. That looks pretty good. On the back, let's go ahead and make this a little thicker because this is what's going to support all the weight of the charger. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this back pane. I'm going to click E for extrude. And let's go ahead and pull this out. We know it's 0.15 now. I like to see this at least 0.4 inches thick. So if it's already 0 0.15, 0 0.4, let's go ahead and put 2.5. 0.25, sorry. There we go. That looks better. Now you see the back wall sticker, so that's when we will support the weight of putting that charger mat in against the wall. Now for our final step, we need to put holes so where we can put screws into. So in order to do that, we're going to go ahead and create another sketch. Select on this back plane. We're going to click on our line. <clears throat> it's important now to go to line type. We're going to select construction. Now we are, no, our midpoint is going to be four blocks in because there's eight blocks because we notice it's four inches wide and each block equals half an inch. So if we go to the fourth block, I click on here. I move down, type in 90. Now there's my construction line. I can click finish sketch. And that will stay in here. If I uncheck the sketch, see the line goes away. So it's just a construction line for us. So I have two options. Either I can click hole or push H, or I can click create and create a cylinder. I would prefer to create a cylinder. It makes it a little easier because sometimes clicking on the hole, some of the dimensions don't add up, but it makes it hard to align. So from here, I'm going to go ahead and click on my, my wall. And now I'm going to align it with the line and where I want this. I'm going to make my line 0.22 because no, that's the size of my screw. From here, we know we want it to go in, so it's going to be negative. And now we know that our wall says 0.4. So we'll just go 0.45 for good measures. There's a hole. Let's do one more. Create cylinder. And then this plane. We're going to line it up. 0.22. Negative 0.45. Good. There you go. Here is our model. So now all we have left to do is print it. So I'll be back once it's printed. Please keep in mind that this model is based off of the size of my charger. Your dimensions and sizes might be different. It should all have used as a reference to understand how to create this model.
Okay, now that it's printed, let's see if everything fits before we try to mount on the wall. Perfect fit. Now that the holder is mounted, let's get this charger installed. The next step is to feed the power cord through the hole in our base plate and then plug into the wall. This is a simple but important detail that keeps the wire neat and organized. And there you have it, a custom design wall mount. We went from an idea to a digital model and finally to a finished product that you can use. If you're a beginner, I hope this has shown you just how powerful and rewarding it is to design for yourself. Thanks for watching this episode of Functional Print Friday. If you found this helpful, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more projects. Let me know what you want to see me design next in the comments below. Happy printing, and I'll see you next week.